Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this video I'll be showing you my technique for making an adjustable Schleich scaled model horse halter. And it doesn't have to be Schleich scaled. You can pretty much scale this technique up or down however much you'd like to make it fit your model horse. All the materials I use for this tutorial will be listed down below. Now without further ado, let's head over to the craft table. The first step is going to be making the hardware. Using my 0.4mm wire, I'm going to make a wire square, which is very simple. You bend the wire like this. Then I snip it off so both ends meet. And you will be needing two of these. Next we're going to make a buckle. We're going to start like we did for the square. Then bend the wire again like this, making it a little bit shorter this time. Then we're going to bend it back over so it meets the starch. Then you bend it again like this, trying to make it as equal as possible. And finally another 90 degree bend, and it should look pretty much symmetrical. Then snip it off, making sure there's enough wire for there to be no gaps. And it should fit pretty snugly on the ribbon you are using, like this. And you'll be needing two or three of these, depending on what style you're going for. Next I'm switching to my 0.3mm wire and a thinner pair of tweezers. And to make the tongue for the tongue buckles, I'm going to make a tiny loop at the end of the wire. Then snip it off, making sure it's a little bit longer than your buckle. And to add the tongue to your buckle, you want to bend the middle part of your buckle up a little bit like this. Then place the tongue on the part that is sticking out. When you've done that, bend the middle part back down so the tongue can't go anywhere. And your buckle is done. Next part we'll be making is a jump ring. And it's as simple as taking a round nose pliers and just bending your wire around that. Then snipping it off so the ends meet. And these you'll need three of. We're also going to be needing a triangle piece. So to do that, we're going to bend the wire into a triangle shape and make it about the width of your ribbon. And again, snip it off so the ends meet. And you will need two of these. For one of the triangles, we're going to attach a clip like this one. It is from the brand Rio Rondo. However, if you don't have one like this, I'll show you how to make a simple wire clip. You take a round nose pliers and simply make a small loop. Then you bend the wire in the opposite directions to make an S shape like this. Snip it off and there you have a simple S hook. I'm going to slightly open one of my triangles, then slip my clip of choice onto it. Close it again with some pliers and this piece is finished. For the second triangle, we're going to take one of our jump rings that we made, open it, then slip it onto the triangle. Close it up again, and that's it. Now for the final piece of hardware, I'm going to take my very thin 0.3mm wire and twist it into a small jump ring with a pair of tweezers. I'm going to gently cut it off, and you're going to want to make 5 of these for every buckle that you're going to use, so I'm making 10. And this is all the hardware you'll need for one halter. Now we're done with that, let's move on to step number 2. In step 2, we're going to assemble both our hardware and our ribbon to form the final halter. When it comes to ribbon, I don't have that many color options, let alone any with patterns. I decided to choose a classic red ribbon, but then I will be painting it to give it some flair. To stabilize the ribbon while I'm painting it, I'm going to tape down the amount I think I'll be using, and for my case, it was 30 to 35 centimeters. Then I am using normal white acrylic paint to paint two thirds of the ribbon's width in white. When the white's done, I'm going in with phthalo blue and painting in one third of the ribbon's width 
over the white. And like that, you can paint on any design you'd like onto ribbon to spice up your halters. Now let's actually assemble a halter. I'm starting by measuring my ribbon halfway over the nose, then cutting it with, oh, let's say four millimeters in a seam allowance, if you will. Then taking my wire squares, I'm going to be using my Bison kit glue to glue those onto each end of the nose band. And this is done by folding the ribbon over the square, then gluing it down onto itself. Next, taking a separate piece of ribbon, I'm going to fold over maybe about half a centimeter. Then I'm making a small cut in the middle. It should be around three or four millimeters long. And because this is a delicate silk ribbon, I'm going to be using a gel super glue to seal the raw edges. Then I'm going to place one of my buckles onto the ribbon, like this. Then I'm using the bison glue to glue it down. I cut the ribbon about half the length of the noseband, then I attach it to the square. Again, taking a separate piece of ribbon, I cut the end to a point, then I apply small blobs of super glue onto it. And before that glue dries, I apply one of the tiny jump rings onto the ribbon. And I repeat that five times, spacing them equally. When the glue has dried, I use a thicker needle to poke holes in the middle of all the jump rings. The super glue stiffens the ribbon and makes the hole you poke stay there. Now you want to slide this piece onto the first slot of the buckle attached to the noseband. Poke the tongue of the buckle through one of the holes, preferably the middle one. Then slide the rest of the ribbon through the second slot of the buckle. Now I'm cutting the end of that ribbon that doesn't have the small jump rings. Then I'm folding and gluing it onto the free square of the noseband to make a loop like this that fits snugly around the horse's muzzle. Taking some more ribbon, attach it to one of the wire squares like this. Then measure it and cut it a little bit higher than the horse's eye. Fold and glue a jump ring to the end you just cut. And it should look something like this. Then repeat the exact same process on the other side. Attach a piece of ribbon to one of the jump rings. Then measure it underneath the chin of the horse. And cut it off where it meets the jump ring on the other side. Then glue the triangle with the clip to the edge you just cut. Now take the triangle with the jump ring attached to it and attach to the triangle a piece of ribbon. Now open the jump ring and slip it onto the part of the noseband with the buckle. You're not gluing this jump ring in place, it should be able to slide back and forth. Cut the ribbon attached to the triangle just a little bit longer than the cheek pieces. Then fold it over and glue it onto itself around the throat latch. This diagonal piece should be able to slide back and forth. Now you can hook that clip onto the other jump ring and the throat latch should look like this. Taking a new piece of ribbon, repeat the steps to attach the buckle. So make the hole, seal it, then glue on the buckle. You want to cut that ribbon pretty short, then fold and glue it onto the jump ring that the clip from the throat latch attaches to. On a new piece of ribbon, Attach five small jump rings like I showed you earlier. Attach that ribbon to the buckle that we just put on the halter. Now put the halter onto the horse and bring that ribbon coming out of the buckle around the back of your horse's ears. Then cut, fold and glue it onto that jump ring so it fits well on the horse's head. And with that, your basic halter is complete. Step 3 will be adding details, which is technically optional, but I think it adds a lot of realism. So if I want to add a logo tag to my halter, I simply search up the brand name, followed by logo. Then I copy paste that into a Word document. I resize them to be teeny tiny, but if you'd like to skip that step, I have included a Google disk file in the description with several logos in Schlagscale if you'd like to use that. Then I print them out, making sure to have the best quality setting on my printer. Then I cut the logos out using a small pair of scissors and leaving a little bit of room on top of the logo. 
Next, I covered just the logo part in a piece of clear tape to protect it. And of course, cut off the excess. Now all that's left to do is to glue the top part of the logo to the cheek piece of the halter. And this is one of my favorite details to add because it just adds a lot of realism, which I love. Next, to make a cute name tag for your halter, you're going to take a piece of a soda can and punch out a small circle like this. I'm using a small hole puncher, but you can probably also cut it if you have steady hands. Next, take your punched out circle and poke a small hole near the edge with a needle. Next, make a small jump ring like I showed you how to do earlier and slip your metal circle onto that through the hole. Then you can close that jump ring around any of the hardware on the halter. I chose the buckle and you've made a name tag. Next, I'll show you how to make a fly veil. First, you want to fold and glue the end of your desired ribbon like this to make a loop. Then cut it and do the exact same on the other side. And it should fit around the forehead of your horse like this and meet the halter on both sides. An option if you want it to be two-toned but you don't want to paint it is to take a normal piece of ribbon, then glue it and fold it so it's half its width. And you can glue this onto your halter or in this case your brow band. Now I'm taking a piece of embroidery thread or otherwise thin soft thread and I'm wrapping it around my finger. Then I take it off and cut it so you get equal-ish strands of thread. Now glue these all along the back side of your brow band. When I've done that, I'm cutting the fringe so it's a bit more even. And your fly veil is done. The only thing left to do is to attach it to your halter like this. You don't want to glue it in place, you just slip it on like I showed you and you can remove it at any time. A couple extra quick details you can add is fleece padding like I've done with this halter. I also like to use these nail art sticker strips to decorate your halters and you can get these off AliExpress and I will leave a link down below. And there are so many other details you can add but those will be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching all the way through. I really hope you enjoyed the tutorial and you understood everything. Please let me know down in the comments if there's anything in this video you'd like me to improve on next time. I am open for suggestions. I'm also working on several exciting projects which I'm very excited to share with you guys. Anyways, thanks again so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!